Hello and welcome to my channel, Vice Rhino here. Today we're looking at a video that's probably going to be quite painful. It's Eric Hovind interviewing Saitem Brigenkate about his debate with Matt Dillahunty. I saw the whole debate a while ago and found it amusing that Matt wrote his rebuttal to Sai in advance of the debate, knowing how pre predictable Sai is. But anyways, let's get on with it. Hey guys, we're here in studio with Saiten Bergenkate, who recently did a debate with Matt Dillahunty in Memphis, Tennessee. Matt Dillahunty is a professed atheist. We say, prof I'll let Sai tell you why he says professed. Sai, uh, man, great job at the debate in Memphis. I thoroughly enjoyed being there with you and getting to go on dogma debate with you. From your perspective, tell us what happened during the debate. Well, I think that uh, Matt's uh, world, he was thoroughly exposed for what, it, for what it is. Debates presuppose things such as truth and I expose the fact that he cannot make sense of the very concept of truth unless he starts with God. No, you didn't expose that. You asserted that. You provided no evidence or justification for that claim. So that debate didn't end at the beginning. It ended long before when he said that truth is that which corresponds to reality, and he can't know what's real. He also did a good job of explaining that the way we, as humans, determine reality is to compare our experience of reality with the experience of others, and that which matches up can reasonably be believed to be true. It, yep. it ended prior to the debate even started. Yeah, well, that's... and I love that approach. Yes, Eric, you love that approach. Because if you take that approach, it means you don't have to think, and you don't have to justify any of your claims. You can just drone on about how any intellectually honest person will concede that hard solipsism is a hypothetical possibility. But Matt tried to save himself, and he kept coming to this. So this is what uh, the skeptics and atheists are doing these days. They're saying, hey, we can't know anything. We can't know truth. All we have is belief, what we believe to be true. Go into that. Well, one thing that one of the clips that I played at the very beginning was Matt himself saying, it doesn't matter what you believe. You can believe that flying pixies clean out your sink at night. It doesn't matter. What he actually said was, uh, naked pixies whisper in your ear and clean out your sink at night. It doesn't actually matter, but I like Matt's version better. He also mentioned, after you played all your little quote-mind clips of him, that being science-minded and reasonable, he may have changed his position since then in order to bring his views closer to the truth. You know, like any rational person would. It depends on what corresponds to reality. Those are words out of Matt's very mouth. So when he says he only has beliefs, he's the one who said it doesn't matter what you believe and contradict <laughs> himself yet again. I believe that he believed that when he said it doesn't matter what you believe, he was referring to the belief that your beliefs are believed to have no impact on reality. I love that. So he is defeating himself over and over. Now this was a mostly atheist audience. Um, do you feel like it was a somewhat hostile audience? Oh, it was definitely hostile, but the thing is I expected it. And I wanted that. I can't say for sure without having actually been in the room, but they didn't seem hostile at first. You got a fair amount of applause from them when you were done your points. Um, now, there were a few of them who laughed at you when you refused to support your position and just asserted that the debate was over and you won. But I think anyone who asserts that in any debate will probably be laughed at. All things considered, I think they were very respectful towards you. At least up until it was clear how much you looked down on them by asserting that you know more about what's in their heads than they do. That was about when it went downhill, and I can't really say I blame them. Because uh, it was a paid event, and uh, I kept asking the organizers, if you make money over and above breaking even, who gets that money? I asked them three or four times, and they would never answer me. So I did not want really Christians to attend to pay money to an atheistic organization. I, I don't know for certain, but I would wager that they did tell you. During the debate, you accused one of the organizers of refusing to allow an open discussion, and when she tried to deny that, you just spoke over her with a, yes, you did. And as the debate had a discussion portion built into it, what that looks like is that there was a negotiation as to how the discussion should take place, not that they refused it. During the discussion, you claimed again that they didn't want to do a discussion. During the discussion. So when you say they wouldn't tell you, forgive me, but I don't believe you, because you have not demonstrated yourself to be a reliable source. I wanted atheists to show up to, to hear the truth being proclaimed and to hear the gospel. And so far on YouTube, it has about 60,000 views. Just to update you, it's now at 450,000. 
And um, you know, that's what I'm really thankful for, that over 60,000, probably mostly atheists, since it's on the atheist channel, have heard the gospel. Amen. And they might never darken the doors of a church. I, I don't By do the Bible spirit of deception, no. as Paul writes. I don't do Bible studies with, with uh, non-believers. No, I don't do Bible studies with atheists. I will not put the Word of God up to the, the test of the atheists, but I don't do Bible studies with atheists. Yeah, excellent work preaching the gospel there, buddy. Now, David Silverman quoted or, or tweeted something afterwards. He said, that's it? I can't believe it. He ended the debate with the gospel. And I just retweeted that and said, amen. I was like, what, else, what better answer is there other than to end with the gospel? So. Sai may have ended with the gospel, but the actual end of the debate came from Matt, and it was quite good. At this point, I see no reasonable justification for believing that God exists, the subject of this debate. And I also see no reasonable justification for why anyone should ever again waste time debating someone who has no interest in debate but wants to merely claim that you're wrong because they're convinced that they have a special friend who ensures that they cannot be wrong. So, yeah, amen. People will forget the rest of the arguments, but hopefully they'll uh, remember that the gospel was preached. And uh, David Silverman, I, I know you want to ask something else, but David Silverman, he said something where he questioned the, the sincerity of my beliefs. He questioned whether I was truthful in my belief uh, that God exists. So I posted a video um, just recently challenging David Silverman to a polygraph test or even an MRI, a lie detector test, to see which one of us is being truthful. When I say that I believe in God, I'm more than happy to, to take a polygraph if he will take one as well. And so far, uh, there's been no response, and I don't expect any response. Cause because that would be a waste of time. Polygraph tests are not perfect, so if it came up with the result that either you or David Silverman didn't like, it would be a simple matter just to blame it on how inaccurate polygraph tests can be. There's a reason why they don't use them for court cases, you know. You know, Scripture says that everyone believes that God exists, and you know, I would love to see um, David Silverman uh, answer those, those challenges, answer the challenges, to, to say, I'm a, I'm a polygraph, I'm a lie detector, whether or not he believes in God. And when it came up with him telling the truth, you surely would blame the polygraph, since they are known to not always be accurate. Hence why it would have been a waste of time. I love that idea. That's a great idea, isn't it? Oh. Now here's what happened, Ben. You, you threw this out there where we're, while we were on the Dogma Debate show, and I had no idea that was coming. You throw it out there, and I went, wow, what a great idea. And actually, yeah. David Smalley, the host of Dogma Debate, I think he was kind of like, uh... Yeah, you would do that? Oh, I think that would be okay. And I can tell in the back of his mind, he's going, I bet David's going to want a way out of this. Actually, I watched that one as well. And uh, if anything, he actually seemed pretty excited for it. Here, I'll show you the clip. I want to make an offer right now because David Silverman was questioning whether I was sincere or not. Mm -hmm. I'll make an offer right now. If somebody wants to raise the money, I will take a polygraph if he will about the existence of God. I'll make the offer right now. Oh, I'll wow. take a polygraph. Wow. I'll, pay, I'll take a polygraph right now. Eric, would you be in if on that? If anybody raises that money, really cool, yeah. if David Silverman, and we'll see who's being sincere with their beliefs. Wow, that's a good, that's a good thought. That is a good thought. Would, would you do that, Eric? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Really? Yeah. That's okay. very interesting. Well, let's see if he takes us up on that. Wow. I love that. I would love to do it right here on Dogma Debate. I'd, we'll, love, to, I'd love to see that, we'll too. We'll turn this into Maury. I, I know, actually... <laughs> well, a guy in the back of the audience... Soon as he said that, jumped up, ran out the back door to go talk to David Silverman, the president of the American Atheist Association. And wouldn't you know it, 10 minutes later he comes in and he goes, uh, just so you know, uh, polygraphs aren't admissible in a court of law. Because of how inaccurate they can be, need I go on? Why do you suppose he did that? <laughs> I imagine it would be because he has better things to do with his time than submit to a test whose outcome doesn't matter in the slightest. Wow, that's good. All right, people uh, get to call into the Atheist Experience and talk to Matt Delahante. Uh, what would you encourage them to ask Matt after the debate? Well, that's one thing about this debate is that I hope that the things that were brought up haunt him for the rest of his life as an atheist. I still hope that God grants him repentance and that he becomes a Christian. But if he maintains his atheism and keeps this show going, I hope that people call and say, ask, ask him, are you a solipsist? Somebody who can only know that which is in their own mind. I like how you're changing your definition of solipsism here. During the debate, you equated solipsism with the possibility that he could just be a brain in a vat. He answered that question during the debate. Basically, he can't prove that he's not a brain in the vat, so in that way, yes, he is a solipsist. Does he believe that he is? No. Does not being able to prove a claim false automatically make it true or possible? No. Do you, you know, what is your definition of truth? That which corresponds to reality. 
your perception of reality or ultimate reality. If it's ultimately real, reality, you've admitted that you can't know it's ultimately real. So how can you know it's true? And I hope. And that's another thing that he answered. Basically, it's an amalgamation of what we can all agree is real based on our own individual perceptions. That people keep calling into a show. Another thing that he kept saying is that if he has beliefs that are not supported by evidence, he'll give them up. And that's one of the things that he keeps saying, for instance, that a rock is a rock in any possible world without minds. So what is your evidence of that? And of course he had no evidence. The evidence is that minds seem to have no effect on the existence of physical objects. I know there's some wonky stuff out there in quantum theory that suggests that observation does have effects on the universe, uh, but I'm sure that if you went into more detail with Matt on that point, he would have conceded that it's possible that a rock is not a rock if there are no minds. But I don't think it matters either way, as neither of you seem to be building your worldview around what a rock is when no minds are present. He just had an argument, and that's the very thing that he accuses Christians of. So I hope that people watch this debate over and over again, and use things that were brought up in this debate when they contact him. And I urge them to phone his show and ask him these questions. I imagine they'll be hung up on. Yeah, he probably will hang up on them, out of exasperation for having already answered their questions a million times. Uh, that being said, eventually, after answering the same question over and over and over again, the screeners won't allow callers through with that question, so they won't even get through. But uh, I think that Matt's feet need to be held to the fire. Wow. Well, it certainly was a great debate. I encourage you to check it out. Cy, thanks for all the time and energy and effort you put into this. Uh, people, of course, can check out your website, Proof That God Exists. Dot .org, which I encourage, and they can actually support you in what you do there as you travel around to universities and engage college students. Yes, you can support him in his work, because an all-powerful god still needs your money in order to accomplish his work. The rest of the video is just them circle-jerking about how awesome all their content is, so I'm going to skip that and instead go through size test on his website. Alright, question one. Truth. Absolute truth is defined here as true for all people at all times everywhere. Absolute truth exists, does not exist, I don't know, and I don't care. Uh, well, I'd have to say I don't know, because it certainly is possible that there is something that's true for all people at all times everywhere, but I don't know what that would be. So I'm going to select this one. I don't know if absolute truth exists. That is absolutely true, or that's false. Um, well, it's not necessarily absolutely true. As I said earlier, um, I, I simply don't know. That's not making a statement of absolute truth, that's just saying that I don't know. So, false. Truth squared. Absolute truth exists, absolute truth does not exist, I don't know, and I don't care. This is not a glitch, think about it. Um, I have thought about it, and the answer is still I don't know. Okay, let's let's go through let's let's give the answer that he wants just so we can get to the next question. So absolute truth exists. Knowledge is a justified true belief. I know something to be true, I don't know anything to be true. Um well you're using the word true in the definition of knowledge, so to say I know something to be true, it's it's a bit circular there. So let's um instead of saying justified true belief, I would say a better definition would be justified reasonable belief, in which case that yes, I could know something to be true. Logic exists, logic does not exist. Okay, uh, you have acknowledged that absolute truth exists and that you know some things to be true. The next step towards the proof that God exists is to determine whether you believe that logic exists. Logical proof would be irrelevant to someone who denies that logic exists. An example of the law of logic is the law of non-contradiction. The law states, for instance, that it cannot be both true that my car is in the parking lot and that it is not in the parking lot at the same time and in the same way. Yes, I would agree with that. Logic. Universal. What do you believe? To reach this step, you have acknowledged that there is absolute truth, that you know some things to be true, and that logic exists. I didn't actually concede all of that. You just wouldn't go forward with an actual reasonable thing. But let's just give that for now. Now let's see what you believe about logic. Is logic universal or up to an individual? Are contradictions invalid only where you are or only because you say they are? Or is this universally true? Um, well, I would say that uh, logic, as far as we know, seems to be universal, but it could definitely, like, they could find out in the future that it could be relative. Like, there, there's no way of us knowing that for sure. Um, but I, I know the answer that you want is logic is universal, so I'm just going to click on that. Logic. Unchanging. 
Logic does not change, logic changes. To reach this step, you have acknowledged that there's absolute truth, that you know some things to be true, that logic exists, and that it is universal. The next question is, does logic change? Um, again, that depends what you mean. Like, um, if, if you mean, does my logic in my brain change? Absolutely. There are times when I use logic properly. There are times when I use logic improperly. It, it's in within myself yes logic does change and sometimes i apply it uh well sometimes i apply it poorly um but is in in an absolute sense without without a mind i guess logic wouldn't really exist uh so in that sense before minds existed logic didn't really exist so i'm going to say logic changes Keep in mind that the question is whether is not whether or not our perception of logic changes, but whether or not logic itself can change. If you believe that logic changes, then for all you know, logic has changed and contradictions are now valid. In that case, you could have no problem with contradictions like the one above. Um, as I explained, logic needs a mind in order to exist. And there was a point in the universe, whether you're a creationist or not, Oh, well, yeah, I guess God's mind would count as a mind for you guys. Okay, so n not for you, but for us. There there was a point in the universe where uh, logic did not exist. And so when minds developed, that like, logic started to exist at that point. So, like, no, I don't know. I might be wrong on that. I haven't taken any courses on logic. I'm just a layman here. But I'll click on the answer you want. Logic immaterial. Um, no, logic is not made of matter. I mean, oh, are you getting at the sense? Let's read this bottom thing. To reach the stuff you've done, blah, 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 blah. Next question is whether you believe that logic is material or immaterial. In other words, is logic made of matter or is it an abstract entity? Oh, I have a feeling I know where you're going with this. This, this depends, though. Like, it's made of matter in the sense that my brain is made of matter and my brain is using chemical reactions also made of matter to uh, to come to logical conclusions. Um, it, it's not made of matter in the idea that it's an, it is an abstract concept. Like it, I don't I don't think this question matters actually. To be honest, I'm just gonna click that. The proof the proof that God exists. Uh, let's click on that. See what it is. The proof that God exists is that without him you couldn't prove anything. Oh, yeah, of course. Even if I actually agreed with you up to this point, I... That... No. That's... No. Uh, truth, knowledge, and logic do not necessarily prove anything. Uh, when you may try to account for truth, knowledge, and logic without God, the rest of the site will expose your inability to do so and Christian's justification for them without God. What? Uh, no, this proof isn't valid. Like, you asked a bunch of leading questions, wouldn't let me give proper answers, and then finish up with, oh, you think things can be proven, therefore God exists, because you couldn't prove things without God, but you haven't, you haven't proved that you can't prove things without God. So it's like, oh my God, you make my brain hurt, Sai. Anyhow, using your logic, I can simply believe that you don't exist anymore, assert it to be true, and therefore it is true. Unfortunately, that's not quite how reality works, and I don't think you're going away anytime soon. So anyway, that's it for today. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at ViceRhino and on Minds.com by the same name. See you next time.